just like the set data structure that we've looked at, JavaScript comes with a built-in map class, which is a very effective constant time key to value lookup and maintenance data structure. And it really makes JavaScript a very powerful modern programming language. You can create an instance of the map by using the new operator with the map constructor. At its core, a map is a key value store and the intent for this name to age is to have the person name as the key and the person age as the value. As an example, we can state that John is someone who has an age of 25 and then Jane is someone who has an age of 28. This map now has two keys, John and Jane, with corresponding values of 25 and 28. Every key in the map needs to be unique. So if you want to update John's age because he's just had his birthday, we can do that by setting John to a new value of 26. Just like the set data structure, internally map uses hashing to ensure constant time O of 1 reading and writing for any given key. We've done some writing using the set method and we can do some reading by using the get method. So of course the current age for John is 26. So if we get John, that is the numeric value that we get. If we try to get something that is not present within the map, as an example, Jill has never been set. So the JavaScript runtime will give us a special value of undefined. In addition to providing values to the map by using the set method, we can also provide values to the map by passing an iterable to the map constructor. Each item of the iterable must be a key value pair. And as an example, we are providing an array over here where each item in the array is a key value pair, like France is the key and Paris is the value. So essentially here we are creating a map with the values preset, France pointing to Paris, Italy pointing to Rome, and Australia pointing to Canberra. Within JavaScript, there is a convention of using the term entry for a key value pair. Just like any other class within JavaScript, we can use the instance of operator to check if a particular value is an instance of a map. And of course, name to age and country to capital are both maps. Maps in JavaScript work nicely as iterables. The map constructor accepts an iterable of entries. The map itself is an iterable of entries. And it even comes with convenience methods to just iterate over the keys or the values. We already know how to create an instance of the map by using an iterable of entries, like an array of entries. And here we have a map of prices with cucumber pointing to 50 and tomatoes pointing to 35. Map provides an entries method, which returns an iterable of entries. So here we can log the entries cucumber 50 and tomato 35. And in fact, the map itself is also an iterable of entries. So we don't even need to invoke the entries method. We can simply loop through the entries of a map. And just like any other iterable, we can also easily get the output as an array by using the spread operator. We can also iterate over just the keys of the map by using the keys method and even just the values of the map by using the values method. Now, because the map itself is an iterable of entries and it accepts an iterable of entries in the constructor, we can actually create a copy of the map quite easily by just passing it to a new map constructor. So here prices copy will be a new map that contains the same key value pairs as the original map. Traditionally, before we got a proper built-in map class, people used objects even for dynamic key value pairs. But in modern JavaScript, for the key-based lookup data structure, the map class provides a number of benefits over just using or rather abusing an object. As we saw in our prototype lesson, we can create a clean object free from any standard object keys like toString by using object.create now. And this does allow us to have strings as keys with values being whatever we want and even works with symbols reliably. But for any other type of key, it can be pretty darn unreliable. For example, if we set the number 123 to salam, it can get overwritten by the string 123 hola. And if we try to use an object as a key, it is going to be completely useless. That is because all objects will get converted to the same string key. So even though we are trying to set six different keys over here, we will only get four distinct keys in the final object. The map data structure, however, has no such restrictions. You can use any value that you can assign to a variable as a key within a map. Let's create a new instance of the map and set high to high, set a symbol to bonjour, set a number to salam, set a string one, two, three to hola, set an object to konnichiwa and a different object to namaste. And if we log out the map, it has all of these keys and all of these values without fighting with one another. So the guidance is pretty simple. If you need an object with a known structure with only identifier friendly or string keys, use an object. But if you need a dynamic key value data structure, use the map instead. The JavaScript map always preserves insertion order and this can greatly simplify any complicated 
sequence preservation requirement when processing data. Consider a simple array of entries where we have different orders as they come in. John placed an order for a burger, Jane placed an order for a steak, and then John placed an order for a salad. Your mission should you choose to accept it is to consolidate the values under the same name and to make sure that whoever placed the order first continues to be first in the queue. We can create a grouping of these quite easily by using a JavaScript map. We simply loop through the entries present within the orders, collect the name and the item, and check if it already exists within the map. If it does, then we get the array by that name and push this item into that array. Otherwise, this is the first time we have seen this name and we simply set the name key within the orders to an array of that individual item. Once this loop terminates, we should have all of the items grouped by the name pointing to the array of the items that the person has ordered and because the insertion order is preserved, John will appear before Jane. Just like the set data structure, the map class has a very laser focused utility and therefore a very easy API to master with just a handful of properties and methods. We create a very simple map to keep track of who owes us how much money. We've used the set method before, but what you might not know is that we can actually chain the set calls because it is a fluent API. So here we are saying that John owes us 10 and Jane owes us $18. Another method that we've already looked at is the get method, which can be used to get a value for a particular key. And if that key is present, then the value is returned. And if that key does not exist within the map, then it returns undefined. We can remove items from the map by using the delete method. So if John manages to pay us back, we can remove him by using delete John. The delete method will also return true if that key did exist within the map. And since John did indeed exist, we get back true. However, if we invoke it with something that does not exist within the map, it will still pass. However, it will return the value false to indicate that Jill never owed us any money. We can also check if a particular key exists within the map by using the has method. So has Jane will be true and has Jill will be false. Now, right now, there is only one person that owes us any money and it is Jane who owes us $18. And we can see how many items exist within the map by using the size property. Since it's just Jane, we get back the numeric one. We can also remove all keys and corresponding values from the map by using the clear method. And of course, once we've invoked that, this map will be empty. Because objects are such a critical part of the core of the programming language, JavaScript comes with built-in convenience methods to convert from an object to a map or convert from a map into an object. We create a simple map country to flag with some countries, United States, France, and Australia with their corresponding flag emojis. We note that a map is an iterable of entries and we can actually create an object from such an iterable by using the JavaScript built-in method object.fromEntries. So this object will have the properties United States, France, and Australia with the corresponding values being the flag emojis. Just like the JavaScript built-in object.fromEntries takes an iterable of entries and returns an object, there is a built-in JavaScript method called object.entries that takes an object and returns an array of entries. And since we already know that a map constructor will happily take an array of entries and create a map, we can use the chain object.entries followed by a map constructor to convert an object into a corresponding map. So here we have a map that is functionally equivalent to the country to flag map that we originally started with. A key thing to remember about the map data structure is that keys are checked using strict equality. And this can impact your decision on what you want to use as a key and what you want to use as a value. We already know about JavaScript object equality just because we have two objects that are structurally equivalent. They will not be strictly equal because they are distinct instances. Only object one will be equal to object one and object two will be equal to object two. So if we try to create an age map and set an object with the name Alice to the age 20 and on her birthday, we decide to create another object with the name Alice and update the value to the age 21. We have made a mistake. We have made a map that has two objects, both with the name Alice with the ages 20 and then 21. There is nothing stopping you from using objects as keys. And in fact, we can still do that quite easily. We just have to make sure that we use the same object every single time we update the value. So here we are storing the ls object into a simple variable and we make sure that we use that every single time we are setting the age. So now when we look at age map, it only has one object as the key with the value now updated to 21. 
making sure that you store a reference to the object before you start using it into a variable can definitely become inconvenient. So another solution would be to rethink how we structure our map. Ideally, think of some string or a number property that exists on the map that you can use as a key instead. For our simple object, it seems that the string ls is quite important, so we will use that as a key instead. We store an object against the key ls and we just provide a new object whenever we want to modify any property. So now after the two calls, the person map will consist of a single entry with the key ls pointing to the object that has the name ls and the age 21. I hope you enjoyed this comprehensive tutorial on the built-in JavaScript map class. As always, thank you for joining me and I will see you in the next one.